Hello students, welcome to my channel Roots of Economics. In this video, we are starting with Harry Dormer model. Students, if you are new to my channel, watch this video and if you find this helpful, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also share this video with all your classmates and friends. So first of all, let us understand the base of Herodober models. What are they interested in and what is that variable which plays an important role? So Herodober model is based on the experiences of advanced economies. So if you try and applying this model on any developing economy, you may find certain contradictions because they are based on the advanced economies. Both Harrod as well as Domer, they were interested in finding the rate of income growth which is necessary if your economy wants to function smoothly without any interruption. And for that, they attach maximum importance to the variable called investment. According to them, investment plays a key role in the process of economic growth. So what have we understood? That they are based on the advanced economies and they are hunting for the rate of income growth which is necessary for smooth and uninterrupted working of the economy and they are attaching importance to the variable called investment. Now when they talk about investment, according to them, investment has a dual character. That means investment is creating income as a part of demand effect. It is also increasing or augmenting the productive capacity as a part of supply effect. So according to them, investment has a demand effect as well as what? A supply effect. Together, they are going to create net investment and which will tend to amount to expanding the real income and the output. So let us revise what we have done. The change in investment can have change in income due to demand effect or it can have change in productive capacity due to the supply effect and these two together will decide what will the rate of income growth and everything is hovering around the investment. So further they say in order to maintain full employment equilibrium level in the economy there is a condition that you need to fulfill. What is that condition? Condition is that growth in real income and output should be equal to growth of productive capacity of capital stock. So if you closely see this equality or rather the condition on the left hand side, this is nothing but the demand effect of investment and on the right hand side, this is nothing but supply effect of investment. So according to both Herod and Omer, this is the condition that needs to be fulfilled if you want to maintain full employment equilibrium level. If there is any divergence between these two, then your economy will be put off the equilibrium path of steady growth. Your economy will no longer be in the equilibrium path of steady growth. So in order to fulfill this condition, you have to maintain this equality. So let's start with the Domer model first. Domer starts its model by giving importance to the dual character of investment by saying investment generates income on the one hand and increases productive capacity on the other hand. After stating the dual character of investment, Domer tries to answer the question that what shall be the rate of investment where increase in income equals increase in productive capacity provided that full employment is maintained. So whatever we have discussed in the introduction, exactly what Domer model is trying to answer. So what shall be that rate of investment? Now let's understand the supply side and the demand side separately. On the supply side, Domer says that if you invest I dollar, due to that productive capacity will be IS where I is your annual rate of investment and S is your ratio of increase in income to increase in capital. That means change in Y upon change in I. That is the meaning called S. But this S is not the right indicator. Why? Because the new investment will be at the expense of old. So in order to correct this, Domer gave I sigma. I sigma represents total net potential increase in output 
of the economy where sigma is now your change in y upon i so instead of change in y upon change in y they are taking change in y upon i and this i sigma will definitely be less than i s moving to the demand side on the demand side we know that aggregate demand plays an important role and whenever aggregate demand is there definitely there is a role of saving also so here change in i is equal to change in sorry change in y is equal to change in i into 1 upon alpha where change in y is your annual increase in income change in i is your increase in investment and alpha represents your propensity to save so out of your income definitely you will save some amount clear and remaining amount you are going to spend that is going to generate your aggregate demand in equilibrium we know that demand is equal to supply so ad is equal to as in the as we concluded that change in income is equal to i into sigma and on the demand side change in i change in y is your change in i into 1 upon alpha this is it ultimately we are trying to find what the growth rate of investment so we will take this i in the denominator so giving you change in i upon i is equal to alpha into sigma so this represents the rate at which i must grow if you want to assure that your potential capacity is used such that steady growth is maintained at the full employment but if there is no equilibrium then there are cases of disequilibrium either you would be in boom when your demand is more than supply or in depression when your demand is less than supply so that is what the domer model is trying to answer